Okay, the American Floor Covering Alliance, the AFA, announced recently the formation of the Council of Flooring Industry Advisors. It's a referral network. It's made up of a number of ex experts in a variety of, uh, of, of, of disciplines. Ruth Simon McRae of McRae Associates is one of those experts, and she's with us this morning. And Ruth, it's great to have you with us. Well, thank you so much. It's great to be here. Talk a little bit about McRae and Associates, if you would, the kind of work that you do. Okay, well, we um, do all kinds of product development and market research and sort of marketing support, um, basically soup to nuts from, from concept to product development, not just the aesthetic side, also uh, the construction and, and all of the technology around that. And we do a good bit of field research with architects and designers to make sure that the products we develop are what they want and what they're going to purchase. I see, but that's a good idea. Is that mm -hmm. something that's widely practiced in this industry, would you say? It should be. I mean, it definitely should be. I think that's something uh, we offer that gives quality, that adds quality to the product um, because you're sure, uh, it might take a little longer, but you're sure you're introducing the right products. Well, I suspect that's a great idea that mm -hmm. uh, you make something that somebody wants. That's always a good idea without having uh, trial and error, I suppose. What are your thoughts on the Council of uh, Flooring Industry Advisors? It seems to me a great idea. Well, I, I think so, too. I and mean, we're pretty lean in terms of having, you know, one or two expert per discipline. Um, but it seems to me particularly smaller firms um, could really use people like us who have such a broad and long experience in the carpet industry. So it would be smaller players would seem to be at, well, obviously there's a disadvantage about a lot of things, and certainly R&D and design are one of them. And it would seem to have a number of people they can call on would be just a great idea for them. Is that, is that what happens anyway? I, I would think that that's how it, it works or is going to work. I, I also work for larger firms that recognize that they don't have expertise in a particular area that I understand. Um, but a, a smaller firm is going to have one or two designers. Um, or possibly they just want to make sure they're connected to the marketplace properly, um, to make sure that their marketing efforts, because I do get involved on the marketing side, um, that they're going to the right, making the right moves, going to the right um, uh, specifiers. Mm -hmm. Well, I would expect that the smaller players in R&D do have quite a challenge, I suppose, coming up with something new and different. And uh, as you mentioned also, developing products that are going to find a home out there doing that research in advance, that would be something I think would be very appealing to a smaller company. Well, I certainly hope so. Um, you know, they're just a small company has a smaller staff and um, might have a younger staff uh, that doesn't have as many years with as many companies um, as we offer. It's just so much depends on the company. You know, a lot of the smaller players are going to be like a hospitality company, and a lot of what they do is custom. So they're doing research on what the product needs to look like isn't as important, but say they have equipment that they want to run more consistently, or they have a new piece of equipment that they want to pay for, um, help pay for, maybe they need a running line program. Um, that's something I've done in the past. Maybe a running line program for a corporate that's going to help, um, help keep the lights on and yeah. give them additional business. So those are the, that would be the kind of situation that you might need someone uh, such as myself mm -hmm. uh, to do that kind of thing. And something you bring to the equation is having a knowledge going in of the equipment that they have and what you can do with it and exactly. how it can be tweaked and so on. And that's all important, I would imagine. Yes, I would have understand the equipment, I'd understand the yarn systems, but also have some ideas maybe of some additional markets that they could, um, where they could go to. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like with LVT and recently at Neocon, it seems that there are many companies that have hard and sur soft surface products that, that complement each other. And that seems to be a trend, I guess. Is that something? Talk, talk yeah. about that. And that would seem to be something we're going to see more and more of. 
Well, we're, we're seeing LVT has really, um, you know, moved to a large, lar much larger percentage, or just hard surface, much larger percentage um, of the commercial market. And even residential, you're seeing a lot more, you know, wood and uh, wood-like products. Um, I do think it's important to have a, a coordination story, and it's also just important for companies um, to be able to cover more of the floor plate uh, of, of a building. But certain, certain applications, like healthcare, there are areas you just need to have hard, hard surface. Mm -hmm. So as where, when I began my career, there was carpet in the, in the rooms. You don't see that very much anymore. Are smaller players at a disadvantage because I guess few of them probably have both hard and soft surface. Is there a way that they can sort of bridge that gap and fit more with some of the hard surface products that are in, you know, going into so many places of late? Well, now I'm going to take the other side of that because designers do not want to be dictated um, how to use products together. And typically, from my research in looking in their libraries and, and asking them some questions about this, they don't, for example, like a combined book that tells them how to coordinate the hard and soft surface. First of all, they don't know where to put it, um, but also they really want to make that choice. So in that way, a smaller company would not be at a disadvantage as long as they were on trend in terms of color and texture. Uh, because the hard surface company will probably be on trend, and then the products will naturally marry up. I see. So a designer or an architect would just soon come up with the combination themselves, just have somebody suggested to them. They would. They would. And they also have this challenge with their libraries, where you put it. You know, they like to keep the hard together, the soft together. If they have a combined book, it could end up in a no man's land. Interesting, interesting. Keeping abreast uh, colors and styles and so on, that almost seems like a full-time job. It would seem like many smaller players would have a tougher time with that. Well, that's, that's another great uh, insight because it is a full-time job. And, you know, as a consultant, that's part of my job is to, is to be watching the trends and be reading the material and to be going to the shows. Um, and you really need to be looking at a lot of things beyond carpet um, and beyond floor covering in terms of what else is in the interior and in general in art and in other parts of the world uh, where things uh, visually, uh, where is it going? So um, that's something where it's helpful to have an outsider uh, maybe bring some of that in. Mm -hmm. What about working in the hard surface arena? Is that something you've ever entertained? Um, I have actually. Oh. I've, I've, I've worked both in rubber um, and in LVT. I see. That seems like an awfully good place to be in this point, in that LVT seems to be the hottest product that I can remember in recent memory, anyway. Um, it is in some ways, but there's not as much design required. Um, and a lot of the, the design is applied in terms of a film, so it's really strictly graphic, the technical side and the interacting between the yarns and the machine and um, all that interesting engineering, um, you're not doing that when you're designing LVT. You're looking strictly at a style situation. I've got you. And then also a lot of the looks are natural. You know, they're types of woods. Okay, now they're, the woods are more distressed and there's trends in how the woods look, but um, you're still looking at wood and stone and then some textile looks. Basically a picture of something else. Yeah. Yeah, you. that's what you're looking at. So it's, it's not the same as an integra integrated design like you have, mm -hmm. um, as you have in carpet. Now, the, the other thing that's different from that would be rubber, and rubber is like an impression. You know, it, um, yeah. what you're making is generally like a one-color relief um, sculpture. So the design expertise more so in carpet than really any other, any other flooring product. I, I would think so. You still, color-wise, you've got to be on trend um, in hard surface, and you have to have the right visuals. So from a styling angle, it's very important. Mm -hmm. um, you still have to make the right choices. Um, but for someone like me, there's not as much to design in hard surface. I've got you. Seems like carpet has continued to lose share. Mm -hmm. I see these shows, HDTV, 
where people, when they walk in, like the house, got to change this carpet, which is mostly beige carpet, right. I have to add. Um, and there are awfully beautiful carpets around, and I think most people probably have never seen them. Uh, good point. Is, 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 that, is that what it's going to take it, uh, to reverse this, this trend? style design, is that what's going to do it and have people show this and have this get greater exposure on places like HGTV or isn't it possible? Oh, I think it's definitely possible, not just HGTV, but online, on social media, on house.com and other sites. Um, you definitely need to get out there what's available. I also think the trend towards hard surface, it is a trend, you know, and trends the trends do this. Mm -hmm. So at some point, um, certainly residentially, I think there will be more soft sur surface again. Uh, and there still is very much in, you know, in bedrooms, in halls, in places where the acoustics are important. Mm -hmm. um, you can't over overstate the important, important aspect of acoustics. And, you know, even in, in corporate, there's a lot of emphasis on well-being now on the well-being of the worker or in the home, the well-being of the resident. And acoustics is a really huge part of that. Again, in senior living, um, in hospitals, uh, acoustics is one of the things that, you know, people are always filling out now those um, uh, surveys. Mm -hmm. If you go into a hospital, you want to be reimbursed, you fill out a survey. And one of the key things that's coming up on that is um, how people feel about acoustics. Yeah. And nothing offers acoustics like textiles. Well, in the residential arena where every hard surface is down, there's probably going to be a rug that goes over it. Much of that, a lot of the retailers I talk to, it's, it's custom, custom rugs made from broadloom. Well, that, that's true. And, and certainly on the residential side, um, more marketing can be done and more programs to make that easy to do because rugs are very appealing to consumers now. Yeah, they are. Let me ask you just to wrap this up, to share your thoughts and your expectations of the Council of Flooring Industry Advisors. How do you see that playing out? Um, I think it's, it's a great opportunity for us to, to meet with companies we don't normally know, um, that maybe even internationally um, have a need that um, I think it's, you know, it's like a dating service, in a way. Maybe that's a funny thing to say. No, um, it is. Uh, hmm? it, yeah, a no, way it that... It is exactly like that. You know, all of us who've been in the industry for quite a while, we know many people at the larger companies. Um, now, they might forget about us, and this would remind them, but really, they're not the target for this. Um, but there might be a small company, either overseas or up-and-coming company, a small residential company that looks at this and, um, and it links them up with someone with this experience um, and it gives us a chance to work with them. Well, that's a great idea. Thank you so much for, for joining us. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Dave. I appreciate it. We've been talking with Ruth Simon McRae, McRae and Associates, who is now a part of the Council of Flooring Industry Advisors. That's a uh, new service offered by the AFA, the American Flooring Alliance, and this is Top Floor TV.